Hi, my name's Emily, for those of you who haven't been introduced to me in real person or virtually before. And um, I have been commissioned to provide uh, CB1 community with some introductory yoga sessions, hopefully leading up to the opportunity to practice together in person at some point outside. Um, but before we can do that, I'm going to just um, lead you through today a nice practice that will bring out the heroes, hopefully, in all of us. So if you feel like you need a little bit of courage right now, this one's for you. So like any journey, there needs to be a beginning. Let's take our places on the mats. If you just like to come to the tops of your mat and stand in Tadasana. So that's with your feet together, so just turn to face you and your knees together, your thighs drawing together. Your pelvis is upright, so allow the tailbone to come down, smooth the tummy up. Allow the palms to rest by the side. Maybe draw the shoulders up to the ears a little bit and release them back down so that they just sink a little bit further towards your waist. Tuck the chin, elongate the back of the neck. Take a nice deep inhale. So palms are out and already if you span all the way to your fingertips, you can feel yourself fill up with a sort of energy, whatever you need to build for your journey ahead. Exhale, the next inhale, just make sure that you're standing really upright. Inhale and draw the air up through the soles of the feet. Exhale, heavy down into the soles, connect with the earth. Okay, we're going to take our first steps on our journey. Inhale, draw up, look up. And exhale, fold forwards, keep the knees nice and soft. Let the hip bones rise up. Inhale, gaze forward, lift the palms so they come to your shins and the gaze lifts forward. Exhale, draw the navel in and step back onto the knees. Lower your chest down to the mat and then inhale, roll up into a mini cobra. Press the tops of the toes into the ground, stick the elbows into the waist. Inhale and look up towards you, to, towards the space in front of you. Tuck the toes and push back into an extended child's pose. It's active, so keep your gaze lifted and your fingertail, finger, fingernails drawing forwards. Inhale from the armpits to the fingertips. Keep the toes tucked, stretch through the toe mound. Lovely, exhale, round back up. Keep the gaze to the navel. Inhale, look up, let the belly drop down and gaze to where the wall and the ceiling meet. Exhale, round the belly. Just draw the palms underneath the shoulders. Inhale. So articulate through the spine. Exhale, roll forward. Take the gaze to the navel and then pad the arms forward slightly. Lift up the knees. You can keep them bent if you like and then start to walk on your journey. So you're now opening up the back seams of the legs, pedal through left and right. Let the knees cross across the midline and then come into your downward facing dog with still legs. Float up the heels onto the tippy toes and then as you exhale, just see if you can heavy down through the heels. They don't have to touch the floor but you open up the seams of the backs of the legs, the more emphasis you put on that heaviness through the heels. Keep your ears in line with your arms, so don't drop too much. And on your next inhale, lift your right leg up, so you bend at the right knee. Come on to the tiptoes of the left foot and use the motion to propel yourself slightly forwards and drop or step the right hand in between the palms. Let the left leg find the mat. So spread the outer edge of the left leg firmly into the mat. 
and line up the right heel with the instep of the left foot. Bend to 90 degrees into the front leg and make sure that that front knee is not over your ankle. If it is, you can go wider with your stance. Inhale and draw your arms out long. Exhale, take your gaze over the fingertips in front of you. Virabhadrasana 2. This is warrior two pose. Take some deep inhalations. Think about drawing the breath up through the soles of the feet. This posture is named after Krishna, who is standing, facing all the people he's ever dearly adored, and he's being asked to fight them. This is a story from the Bhagavad Gita. So take your gaze into the distance and see if you can drum up some of the courage he was being asked to. Inhale. I'm not going to ask you to fight people. <laughs> Exhale. So we're going to go into Peaceful Warrior. So we've drummed up some courage. Flip the front palm, so the right palm faces up to the ceiling, and rotate your upper body so that you lean backwards. Place the left palm on the outer edge of the left leg and draw open into the right waist. Inhale into your Peaceful Warrior. Exhale. I am peaceful. Inhale. Can feel nice to say it. Exhale. In out loud or in your head. Inhale. And on your next exhale, draw yourselves back into that warrior two pose. Then we're going to cartwheel the hands down either side of the front foot. Point the back toes towards the front of the mat. So you're now straight in that foot and bring your right leg to meet your left in plank. Lower down, inhale into upward facing dogs or you can be in cobra where your belly and your chest are still on the floor. Exhale, roll over the toes, come back into downward facing dog. Walk the dog slowly. And then we're going to lift the left sole of the foot up, bend the left knee towards your chest. Come up onto the tiptoes of the right foot, draw your upper body towards your palms and place your left foot in between your palms. Spin the right foot so that it's pointing to roughly two o'clock. Line up your left heel with the instep of the back foot, the right foot. Press down the outer edge of the right foot and bend to 90 degrees into that front leg and make sure that it's over, not reaching past your ankle. Also see if it can track over your second toe. Inhale, draw the palms up and open. Check that your back palm is also perpendicular, parallel to the floor, so it's not going up or down. Inhale, draw the breath in through the soles of the feet. Think about building your posture from the ground up. You get so much support and strength from the ground. It's a wonderful source of courage and reassurance. Inhale. Exhale. Two more breaths here. Your drishti, your focus point, straight ahead of you. Can you imagine that battlefield? Inhale, build up your sense of courage. Take up space. Exhale, one more breath here. Inhale. And exhale. So we're going to take that into a peaceful warrior again. Place the right palm on the outer edge of the right foot. Try and avoid the knee. It doesn't like being pushed sideways. And span the left side of the body open. So your left palm is facing down towards the ground. Keep the bend in your front leg. Gaze can be to armpit or fingertips or somewhere in between. Or you can look down towards your back leg if it's preferable for your neck. Three breaths here. You've probably already done one or two. So take a nice deep breath from the soles of the feet. Exhale, one more. Inhale. And exhale. 
Inhale, cartwheel the palms forward. Point the right toes forwards again. Step back into plank. Lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Then gently, calmly, peacefully, yet with a sense of purpose and determination, walk your feet up towards your palms. Inhale, take the palms to the shins, lengthen the back. Exhale, fold forwards. Walk your, I'm just going to turn to show you, walk your feet about mat width apart and turn your toes outwards as you drop down into a squat. So it might be that your heels are slightly lifted here. If that's not available to you, you can always sit down and take the weight into your sit bones. Whichever way, press your palms into the center line and lift the spine. This is a humble posture. Take your palms anjal in Anjali Mudra so that your fingertips are just underneath your chin. Tilt your chin down, elongate the back of the neck, feel your spine lengthen. Inhale. So you're humble here, exhale. Yet you're strong and you're ready, inhale. Exhale. So now place the palms on the floor, perhaps even the forearms, as you rock forwards. Keep the weight in the palms and the forearms. Let the hips rise up. Inhale, take a nice breath out to the side and exhale the palms through the center. So here we come to kind of the peak of the hero's journey where we're going to practice uh, with your equilibrium. So the sense of flight that's available to us all. First of all, I'd like you to stand so again at the top of your mat that you have nice space behind you. I'll face you so you can see me better. And take the weight into your left leg and draw your right knee up into your chest. Check that your standing leg is straight. Draw your inner thighs together so that you haven't got a raised high right hip. Elbows are working hard to draw your knee up either to the chest or to the armpit. Now find your drishti point, your focus point. That's somewhere in the distance. It's not the point that you look at that's the point. It's the strength of your gaze. Now hold that sense of strength as you release that right leg. Keep it drawn in as you tilt forward so that your upper body becomes parallel with the mat. Arms span out to the side. And your right leg points, your right feet point down towards the earth. If you want to just take a palm to the back of your hips and check that your hips are level. So it's often true that the right hip will peel back. See if you can just draw that level with the left hip. If you want a little bit more, you can draw your hands behind your hips, interlace them, roll your shoulders back. So I can fly. I can float. Hold it for three more breaths. Once you've held your three breaths, then like you to land that right leg back behind you, bend into the front, into the front knee. So draw the right hip forwards, bend into the left knee. Inhale, lift the arms up, lift up with the back toes, and then exhale, bend the back knee, untuck the back toes. Interlace the fingers behind the back and draw the chest open. Inhale. Exhale, steady your breath. Inhale. And exhale. So release the palms and draw your knees next to each other. 
So for this part, you may need a cushion or a bolster because we're going to come into Varasana, which is hero posture. You want your knees to come together and then you want to sit back in the space between your feet. So as you lower down, roll your calf muscles out of the way. And if you live in Cambridge, you may well have Cambridge calves from all that cycling. So that could be a little bit challenging. Now it depends how you're doing here. If you're finding that your sit bones are not sitting on the mat, just grab yourself a cushion and lower yourself down onto that cushion. If you're on a cushion, I'd like you to stay here. So take your palms behind you and let your chest lift up. However, if you're not on a cushion and your sit bones do touch the mat evenly underneath you, you can start to lower back. So one side, place the palm on the sole of the foot and the other, lower down to your forearm, look up, lower down onto your back, and it's a last flourish. Inhale and take hold of the elbows above the head. Really strong on the thighs and on the knees. Three breaths, wherever you are with this posture. Summon your courage. Release the arms if you're lying down and Gently work your way back up. So we'll all meet here. Place the palms forward. And then one by one, stretch the legs out and allow the blood to come back into the legs. Lower down your plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk your cells back up to the mat, top of the mat. And then we'll practice that on the other side. So inhale, draw the left knee into the chest or the armpit. Find your drishti. Draw your thighs together. Check in the standing leg is strong and straight as can be. So you need to draw your kneecap up towards your hips. And then when you're ready, keep that left knee tucked into the body as you tilt forwards with your pelvis. Your upper body comes level to the mat. Then point your left toes down to the floor. Check your hips are parallel. And again, if you wish, you can interlace your fingers, perhaps the other way. And draw back with your palms so you can roll the top heads of your shoulders back. Check you're not gripping too much with the right leg. Inhale, exhale, one more breath here. And then plant that lower leg, that back leg. Spread the legs a little wider and bend 90 degrees into the front knee. Lift the, twist the uh, back toes to face forward and you're in high lunge. Lift the arms. Ah, lovely, exhale. And keep that left hip drawing forward. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. And then exhale. Sink onto that left knee. Let the palms interlace behind your hips. Draw down towards your left leg. Keep the gaze lifted. Inhale. Exhale. Two more breaths. Inhale. Exhale, one more breath, inhale, and exhale, release the palms. And now come so that your knees are again next to each other, but this time remain lifted. We're going to come into camel pose. It's another very open pose for the chest. And again, come into this posture incrementally so that you feel really safe. The most vulnerable area is your lower back, so that's the reason we place the palms either side of the spine, fingertips pointing down at the, at the lumbar spine, the lower back. You're going to tap your toes so that your heels are a little bit closer towards you and push your hips forward. So that's a starting point. 
draw the elbows towards each other and lift through the chest. If this is enough for you, keep looking where the wall and the ceiling meets and take nice deep belly breaths. If you're up for a little bit more and your hero is kind of ready to receive the glory of having flown so well and being so peaceful and so courageous, Reach back for your heels. Don't dump weight into your lower back. Keep pushing the hips forward. Then you can gradually release the neck back. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Come out, place the palms, the base of the lumbar spine to support yourself. As you unravel, let the knees separate, the toes come together, and lower yourself down onto the mat. You're coming home now. And heroes, one of the most important thing is to remain grounded. So allow your head to steady on the mat in child's pose. Think of what you can contribute now you've been on this journey. Think of what you've gathered up. Think of what you've released. Smooth out your breath. Allow the pressure on your third eye. So if you can't come with your head on the floor, you can always hold your forehead in your hands, in your palms. But allow this contact with the third eye to tune you into your intuition. So every hero needs their intuition. It's what separates them from the pack. Allow this connection to grow stronger with every breath. As you quieten the mind and you still any fluctuations that you may be subject to, relax. You've done the main journey. Now you need to cultivate that sensation and keep it within you ready to share, ready to access when you may need it next. When you're ready, just walk yourselves back up to seated. If you'd like to take a Shavasana, please do. Otherwise, I'm going to just end with uh, three breaths. You can consider any of the elements of being a hero as you could complete your practice. So inhale, courage. Exhale, down the midline, draw it in. Inhale, peace. Exhale, down the midline, hold it in. Inhale, flight. Exhale, down the centre line, hold it back. Namaste. May the light in me honour the light in you. Keep well. And thank you for joining this practice.